After the NYSE Euronext announced its planned sale to the Deutsche Börse for nearly $10 billion last month, there's been lots of speculation on who will be next to merge. Some of that has focused on Asian exchanges. Will they be left behind in this wave of consolidation? Well, I had a chance to sit down with Martin Wheatley. He's the head of Hong Kong's Securities and Futures Commission about a merger in the region. He's also just recently been named the CEO of the UK's finance regulator. Martin sat down with me in New York. But Asia tends not to be under the competitive pressure. So in, in the Europe and the US, there's huge competitive pressure, forcing down prices, forcing margins down. Most of Asia hasn't got that yet. So Asia's probably 10 years behind the curve in terms of its development. But you have seen the Singapore exchange and the Australian exchange emerge. That's right. Singapore, Australia, and then some changes in, in Japan as well. Um, but not that much in Hong Kong because Hong Kong's in a very, very strong position and it primarily looks to China for its growth rather than el elsewhere. But can't you imagine, though, Martin, Martin, if you've got all these exchanges, you know, no matter what, despite the cost, despite those challenges, they're merging. Where does that leave Hong Kong then? Well, Hong Kong's in a strong position. It, it's got a very strong position. It's the most highly valued exchange in the world. Um, it trades on a multiple of 40. Um, actually, at the moment, it, it's in a strong position. It needs to invest in its technology, but you don't necessarily have to do a merger to achieve technology change. As your role um, as the head, the, the operational head of this new uh, renamed uh, regulatory authority in the UK, what is going to be on the top of your list? Uh, absolutely top of my agenda, uh, and, and regulators are all the same, it's about the people that work in the organization, um, getting to know the people, making sure that they feel comfortable with the direction, the strategy for the organization. That's absolutely number one. Um, and then number two is that all of us, whether we're in the US or Europe, we've got an ongoing job of trying to make and create safe markets for individuals. So that can't be put on pause, that has to happen all the day, every day. Do you look to here as any type of guidance, what we're doing on our regulatory front? Um, I think, I mean, every market around the world, the U.S. market clearly has the most developed market from, from many fronts, and I spend a lot of my time talking to the SEC here, understanding what they're dealing with. Um, equally, we look to some of the European markets for the changes they're going through. So it's a very global industry, and, and I think it's really important that we share best practice amongst uh, different regulators. But is there anything that you might take from what the SEC is doing here and bring that back to the U.K.? Well, I think the SEC here and, and the Justice Department have been quite aggressive in their investigative, investigative techniques. And so um, a number of the things that they're doing at the moment are things I'd, I'd quite like to see us develop in the UK.